Hi, welcome to Unit 14, Social Psychology, Module 76, Group Behavior. These slides align with Myers Psychology for the AP Course 3rd Edition. Uh, the learning targets for this module are to describe how the presence of others influences our actions. We're going to talk about terms like social facilitation, social loafing, and de-individuation. Explain how group interaction can enable group polarization. Discuss, discuss the role the, the internet plays fairly large role now in group polarization and discuss how group interaction can enable what is known as groupthink and finally describe how culture affects our behavior. So what is social facilitation? It is improved performance on simple or well-earned tasks in the presence of others. So skilled athletes often find they're on before an audience. What they do well, they often find, now there can be some exceptions to this with anxiety, but they often find that they do better when people are watching. So how does the presence of others amplify our reactions? The presence of others strengthens our most likely response, the correct one on an easy task, and an incorrect one on a difficult task. For example, expert pool players who made 71% of their shots when alone made 80% when four people came to watch them. What if our skill or ability is lacking? The flip side to social facilitation, that is if our likely response is poor, that too will be amplified. For example, poor shooters who made 36% of their shots when alone made only 25% when watched. So what about the home team advantage? You've probably heard that term before or may be familiar with it if you've played in any sports. Uh, home teams win about six in 10 games with the home advantage being greatest for teamwork-centered sports such as soccer and basketball. There's a much bigger home team advantage in those sports. Social loafing is the tendency for people in a group to exert less effort when pulling their efforts toward attaining a common goal than when individually accountable. Uh, you may have noticed this ha happening if, if you've ever been part of a group project. Experiments in the United States, India, Thailand, Japan, China, and Taiwan have found social loafing on various tasks though it was especially common among men in individualistic cultures, according to this study done in 1993. Working hard or hardly working. In group projects, social loafing often occurs as individuals free ride on the efforts of others. But what causes social loafing? Members may feel less accountable and therefore worry less about what others think. Members may view their individual contributions as dispensable, they may overestimate their own contributions, downplaying others' actions, and members may slack off if they share equally in, benef in the benefits regardless of how much they contribute. Deindividuation is another term. It's the loss of self-awareness and self-restraint occurring in group situations that foster arousal and anonymity, being anonymous. The process of losing self-awareness and self-restraint called deindividuation often occurs when group Participation makes people feel both aroused, emotionally elevated, and anonymous. So an example of this is during England's 2011 riots and looting, rioters were disinhibited by social arousal and by the anonymity provided by the darkness in their hoods and masks. Later, some of those arrested expressed bewilderment at their own behavior. They didn't even believe that it was them that was acting that way. Deindividuation can cause can also result in pro-social actions though. The releasing of self-restraint may allow an individual to dance like no one's watching, sing with the crowd, or attempt to express themselves in a way they may not if in, not in the crowd. When we shed self-awareness and self-restraint, whether in a mob, at a rock concert, at a ball game, or at a worship, we become more responsive to the group experience, whether bad or good. So group polarization is the enhancement of a group's prevailing inclinations through discussion within the group. The beliefs and attitudes we bring to a group grow stronger as we distance them with like-minded others. This process is called group polarization, and it can have beneficial results, as when low prejudice students become even more accepting while discussing racial issues. If a group is like-minded, discussion strengthens its prevailing opinions. Talking over racial issues increased prejudice in a high prejudice group of high school students and decreased prejudice in a low prejudice group. You can see the visual right here describing that, the results. What about the internet? 
How does it increase group polarization? Well, the internet offers us a connected global world, yet it also provides an easily accept accessible medium for group polarization. The internet enables opinion bubbles, right? Progressives from progressives and share links to sites that affirm their confirm, affirm and confirm their shared views. Conservatives connect with conservatives and likewise share conservative perspectives. With news feeds and retweets, we feed one another information and misinformation. And we only click often on content we agree with. And so it just sort of feeds this bubble of opinion. So the internet is a social amplifier. Individual visit websites that reflect their interests and concerns and supported, are supported by others with the same views. What are some pro-social and anti-social ways in which the internet impacts ideas? Well, social media has been the moving force behind many political independence movements in countries such as Egypt that had oppressive rulers because it allows like-minded citizens to band together, but it also can fuel hate-driven violent rallies that tear apart communities. So it can be both. Groupthink is the mode of thinking that occurs when the desire for harmony in a decision-making group overrides a realistic appraisal of alternatives. Often when, is a, when a group is involved in decision-making, the hope that the group can arrive at a decision may subtly influence anybody who could be a potential dissenter of the group decision. That individual dissenter may remain silent because of what happens, this feeling of groupthink. So there are some different examples in history, but one of the most famous examples in history of groupthink was the 1961 Bay of Pigs fiasco. In 1961, U.S. President John F. Kennedy and his advisors decided to invade Cuba with 1,400 CIA-trained Cuban exiles. When the invaders were easily captured and quickly, quickly linked to the U.S. government, Kennedy, Kennedy wondered out loud, how could I have been so stupid? Why did none of President Kennedy's advisors speak of the flaws in the invasion plan? Social psychologists Irving Janus studied the decision-making process leading to the ill-fated invasion. He discovered that the soaring morale of the recently elected president and his advisors fostered undue confidence. To preserve the good feeling, group members suppressed or self-censored their dissenting views, especially after President Kennedy was enthusiastic about it. People that were potential dissenters decided not to dissent because of the, the pressures of the group. Since no one spoke strongly against the idea, everyone assumed the support was unanimous. Okay, so shifting gears a little bit, what is culture? We talk about it all the time. Culture is the enduring behaviors, ideas, attitudes, values, and traditions shared by a group of people and transmitted from one generation to the next. It's what we eat at our dinner table, the songs we learn as a child, the politics we support, the sense of independence or dependence we feel on, a fam on family, the roles and norms we're raised with, the stories and stuff that we pass on to siblings, children, and grandchildren. Culture shock is when we don't understand what's expected or accepted in other cultures. When cultures collide, their differing norms can befuddle us. Should we greet people by shaking hands, bowing, or kissing each cheek? Knowing what sorts of gestures and compliments are culturally appropriate, we can relax and enjoy one another without sort of fear of embarrassment or insult. So how does culture vary over time? At the beginning of the last century, people lived in a world without cars, radio bra broadcasting, or widespread electric power and light. But since 1960, most Western cultures have changed with sort of astonishing speed. Middle-class people enjoy the convenience of air-conditioned houses, online shopping, anywhere, anytime, electronic communication, and um, money, right? Eating out more than twice as often as grandparents did, and many people also now enjoy expanded human rights. So there have been big changes. Okay, so what is social facilitation? The mere presence of others arouses us, improving our performance on easy or well-learned tasks, but it de decreases our performance on difficult ones. In social loafing, participating in a group project makes us feel less responsible, and we may free ride on others' efforts. Hopefully not though. When the presence of others both arouses us and makes us feel anonymous, we may experience de-individuation, which is sort of a loss of self-awareness and self-restraint. In group polarization, group discussions with like-minded others can strengthen members' prevailing beliefs and attitudes. And a good example of um, 
Oh, I'm sorry. I was on the wrong slide there. Going to the next one. <laughs> Internet communication magnifies the effect of connecting like-minded people for better and for worse. People find support, which strengthens their ideas, but also I often find isolation from those who with different opinions. Separation plus conversation leads to, can lead to group polarization. Groupthink is driven by a desire for harmony within a decision-making group, overriding realistic appraisal of alternatives. And a good example to think about in history was the Bay, Bay of Pigs invasion fiasco, um, that, which happened during the Kennedy administration. Group leaders can harness the benefits of group interaction by assigning people to identify possible problems and by welcoming various opinions and expert critique. So if you're part of a group, you don't want to have people that are all of the same mindset because um, group thing can, can, can occur. Okay, a culture is a set of behaviors, ideas, attitudes, values, and traditions shared by a group and transmitted from one generation to the next. Of course, cultures differ across time and space. Okay, thank you for listening. Take care.